Hi, welcome to another Donkey Kong Genius video. This is uh, part two of my series on uh, JAWS for the NES. And this, in part one, I went over the uh, evolution of the world record on this game up until this time. And in this video, I'm, I'm going to explain precisely how to execute uh, JAWS for the NES so that you too can compete and achieve the world record. Uh, the Donkey Kong Genius YouTube channel has always been dedicated to discovering new things about games and uh, making those things known and contributing to them. I have uh, made uh, uh, quite a few con contributions to games, uh, finding things out that have been unknown. And it's been very exciting for me. I, uh, I, ver I very much enjoy it. And uh, I also enjoy sharing it with other people and seeing what we can achieve together on games. I think when we work together to see what a game's potential is, uh, I, I believe we have much more fun together as a gaming community. So we're going to take a look here and... I'm going to go over some areas that executionally there are some difficulties involved until you get used to it. Uh, when I uh, first decided that I was going to do a uh, to memorize this, I really had to grind out some practice. I had to grind out some practice on exactly how to execute it. So I'm going to go over all these little areas and I'm going to go over them and explain precisely how to execute it. So hopefully it's not too redundant but it's extremely helpful to those who actually care. So all these movements are buffered right here. The up and down right there. Uh, you don't have to go up and down right there. I mean, you can go down to the to the horizontal where the water ripple is, and then come back up if you want. Uh, I don't. It's it's all buffered. Uh, you're using the same amount of frames. And in fact, it may even be safer because if you're not buffering this up and down movement here, then uh, I mean, it's going to screw things up. Up down, all that's buffered. It has to be perfectly buffered, or everything is going to be thrown off on the attempt. I've uh, I've had it thrown off when I didn't buffer it right. But your goal is to hit this encounter right here every single time. Uh, if you don't, then I don't know what you're doing. But this is exactly where you want it. Okay, first things first. As soon as you come down, there's a jellyfish that comes out. You have to get that jellyfish. In fact, I just move straight down. I don't move to the right. I don't move to the left. I just come straight down so I can hit this jellyfish. Uh, next, I'm going to hit this. This, uh, this. I keep calling these eels, but they're stingrays. But I'll just call them eels because for consistency's sake. Um, I move to the left slightly here at this point because I want to force this eel to the right and no, not the eel. I want this jellyfish to come out on the right because that's what it does in the world record run and this is what I've done and tried to optimize it. I would actually be curious to see what somebody could come up with just how much they might be able to alter this to maybe make it faster without altering the, uh, the RNG outcomes. Now once you get that, I, I'm moving to the right because now I want the eel to show up on the left. But I want to get the crab item before I hit the eel. Before the eel's killed, and you notice how I collected the item before the, the eel could spawn anything. And immediately I, I, I go right to kill the eel. The, the jellyfish, which is going to yield me a crab every single time. So if I perform that just right, it's going to it's gonna work well. 
So I get this eel that comes on the left, I get him, and I quickly go to the right because that's where the next jellyfish is going to show up. So I, he's always going to drop that shell, you grab the shell, and you're immediately going to want to run to the left. And I, I normally do a slight up movement. You don't have to if you're doing it optimally. But you need to move up a little bit just in case so you can snag that jellyfish. You have to, once again, you have to do everything the exact same way. So you have to grab that jellyfish. So once I grab the shell, I make my way to the right again to kill the seal. And as I'm shooting at the eel, the jellyfish is going to come up and... To be honest, I've never had any problem. <sighs> With, uh, are you killing the jellyfish first? Are you killing the eel first? I, I've never seen anything different. I normally kill them right around the same time. It, I guess it doesn't really matter. It's never caused any problem. <sighs> But obviously, immediately you get a needle to the left, not too hard, jellyfish to the right, grab the shell. You notice I did a slight pause there. This is actually a quite significant part of the run. Here, let me take it back. Okay. As soon as you grab that shell, I wait. And I wait for until the eel is completely on the screen and then I make my way to the left. I don't hold right while I'm over there because I want to make sure that my left input coincides with when the tail of the eel makes its, you know, is completely on the screen on the left. The reason why is if you go too soon um, or too late, it's, you're going to have a problem. The jellyfish is going to spawn in a different place or um, yeah, it's just, it, this This is the timing that you want to use. You grab the shell, you wait, and you notice that I go after the eel right there. You notice how I start to move as soon as the ta the end of the eel's tail is, is visible. And I just go straight through and shoot. That's the timing you want to use. And you want to make sure you do that just right. Too, too soon or too late is... You'll, it's a reset, okay? But, uh, trust me, I've had to reset there a few times until I got it down. Here, I grab the shell and I wait. The reason why I wait, I wait until about that jellyfish gets up to the top. Because if you go to the left sooner, this jellyfish that spawns right there will spawn somewhere else. So, once again, as soon as I grab this shell, I wait to about right there so that jellyfish gets up to the top so I can grab that so as soon as I grab that I shoot this then I wait again the reason being because is if if I go too far to the right the next jellyfish will actually spawn up near the middle that's a reset I wait right here under this mound to the peak of that mound on the, the highest peak and I wait for the jellyfish once again to get up near the top and then I run to the left and bam I'm done with the first encounter I got the 50 60 and the five shells and um, those are the problem areas and those are the waiting spots all right that trust me that's gonna come in handy now the second encounter is gonna be a little bit more difficult to execute Okay, but all this is buffered. I actually hold down. All right. As soon as I as soon as I come out of this. All right. Now right there, I'm I'm pressing right until I get the the object. Okay. That's how I fly to the right past it because I don't want to lose any frames there slowing down at that point but I'm holding down right now at this point I've grabbed the item I'm holding down because I want to buffer this okay because all of this is buffered so I can get this encounter in the exact same space 
Now this is quite executional heavy, but I have uh, perfected it with uh, muscle memory. I wait until the spawn comes out. Then I come down, shoot, I drop down a certain length. I know where the eel's gonna come out. I shoot, and I shoot three while I'm falling down right before I head to the left so I can grab the jellyfish. Okay, now once I grab that, I actually come to right about the, the, this small little peak here on this mound. And I start shooting at these. If you go to the right too far, then the, this that jellyfish that spawns right there will spawn on the left and it's a reset. Okay, so everything I do, even though when it looks like I'm waiting and I'm wasting time, I'm actually trying to manipulate the outcome of the game, okay? Uh, next, I run over here. Do not get this star until after the second eel is killed. Okay, and as soon as that eel disappears, I'm shooting to the right to make sure I get that eel. Um, at that uh, that jellyfish. All right. Now this is kind of important. If you attempt to get that star before that second eel dies, that second eel will drop a star. That's a reset. All right. So you have to wait. So what I do is I I run up to the star. I wait, I shoot to the right so I make sure I can get that jellyfish, then I grab the star and then I proceed to the right again. It's very easy, you just shoot it, you go get the um, shell, and usually while I'm running to the left to get this other eel that's just coming out, I, I, I won't hit the jellyfish. Because the jellyfish usually comes out behind it and it comes out soon, so I normally miss it. Now, no, right here, you, know, you notice how I'm waiting right behind this light spot right here by this uh, this long, this second long seaweed right here in the middle? I want both of these eels to spawn on the right hand side. And if I'm any much further than that little, um, little light spot right there, right in the middle of the screen, then, then it's a reset. He's going to spawn somewhere else and it it's just not what you want. You want to do the same thing the same way all the time. Now, you, you notice I do a slight delay for them both to come on. The reason being is because as soon as I kill the first one, I f you notice how I fling around? This is very executional heavy, and it's very important. As soon as I kill that first eel, watch. As soon as I kill that first eel, I'm turning around to shoot. And you notice it's two things. All right, there's two things that, that have to be done right here. And this is, trust me, you're going to have to reset here a few times. All right. When you kill that second eel, in order to it to drop a star and give you 2,000 points, you have to be running towards it. Additionally, in order to stop the jellyfish that comes out on the left that you swing around and shoot, you have to be, once again, running right so it doesn't drop a shell. <laughs> Trust me, that jellyfish has dropped a shell more times than I'd like to admit. And the, uh, st the eel on the right has to... So you notice how... I'm, f I'm running to the right towards the star as it's dying so that when the star appears, I'm already moving to the right. And you notice that I'm already moving to the right right before my harpoon, I think it's a harpoon, hits jellyfish so it's not dropping a shell. Right. And, and, and so way over to the right now, which is fine um, because that's a very tight execution, very tight execution. And I just want to take this back for a second. When I'm waiting right here, I'm waiting for them both to come out for a certain time. And as soon as this eel hits near that, that, tip, that tip right there, as soon as he dies, I can swing around and shoot. i kind of gotten that timed out of uh, where that eel is going to be, where I'm going to do the shot. So I, I nick 
the jellyfish just when I want to and I get the 2,000 points for the star because I'm I'm running to the right when that eel dies and, and when that uh, jellyfish dies. I make sure I continue pressing to the right. Next, two eels are going to come out. The first one's going to drop a shell. Do not grab it. If you grab that shell, the second eel will not yield a star. It's a reset. So what you have to do is wait for the second eel to die so it spawns the shell, spawns the star I mean. So then as soon as that spawns you can grab the shell and the star. And so what if it's only 500 points? It doesn't matter. It's 500 points more than you would have had if you would have just went for the shell and uh, didn't wait and uh, you wouldn't have gotten the, the star drop. And you want the star drop. You don't care about this jellyfish coming up, okay? At this point, you're just going to shoot at that. You can grab a star, shoot at that. Once again, you're going to grab the shell. You're avoiding the jellyfish. You, I mean, you're not going to get them anyway, so it works out in your favor. And then you want to kind of like hang to the left because you want both these eels to come out on the right. And you don't really care about them. You just want to kill them. And as soon as you kill them, you want to pivot to the right-hand side of the screen because you want the baby jaws to come out on the left-hand side of the screen. If you have him come out on the right-hand side of the screen, screws up everything. It's a reset. Okay, so you can run right over there, grab them, grab that shell as quickly as you can, kill them as quickly as you can, and you don't have to run up like that, I do, I just do. Now with the bonus stage, there's a few different things you could do, there's different timings you can do, so you just have to kind of decide where you want to do your pausing and how you want to do it. For this run, I decided to I hold left as soon as I, he's coming out. I shoot as many as I can and speed up. I got three, normally I only get two. But I, I'm pressing right now to speed out. Speeding out, hit left to, to pause. There, it doesn't look like I did at all. <laughs> Looks like I, I missed the left and but to kind of slow down a little bit to try to tighten up the distance between my bombs. Um, but I was able to get them. I'm still holding left at this point. And then I do a pause right here. About right there is when I do, I hold left, I slow down, I, I, I wait for the jellyfish. Alright, so okay. As soon as the jellyfish bounces and starts to move, I do a brief pause. And then I, I initiate my, my rapid hits. That's the most conservative way of doing it. Once again, I do a brief, I do a pause right there. I'm holding right. And then I'm executing, trying to hit the first eel on the left hand side or, or you know, in front of it a little bit. I do another pause about right there. I do a slight delay once the jellyfish comes out. That time I was a little bit later than I was expecting, but it still worked out okay. And this here, I do a pause about right there. Um, I kind of use that uh, that that dark ripple. I don't know, it looks like there's lines across. It looks like there's about seven lines across, uh, one on the far end, and that would make eight. But I do a, a pause right at the, the line that's off the, the screen, and I hold right at this point. And I just got kind of used to, you know, throwing that first lob so that it hits kind of in front of the jellyfish. And then I just, just rapidly hit the butt. Right there I pause. Uh, that's a little... A little late, but yeah, I pause. I'm holding left now, and and once again, I'm just rapidly firing. I've timed it out. I have a pretty good feel about it, and um, you'll just have to grind out some practice on the bonus screen uh, so that you can uh, be very consistent at it, because basically that's what you're going to need 
for a world record, unless you can execute JAWS better or find some other tweak in the game, which would be extraordinary. I've, pl I've spent some time playing around at this point because now we're dealing with um, trying to figure out, because originally at this point you go from here to the port. And once we went to the port, we had to wait s seven seconds. But I found if I do this, it's all buffered, and come, use JAWS coming up as your visual cue, it's now only a four second wait. So it's about three seconds to go up and back down and over. That burns off a certain amount of distance in your pathway. And... Um, and then I'm able to use JAWS as a visual cue here. So you can watch it. Watch as soon as JAWS comes up, I hit the port. It's about three seconds there. One second. Bam! I see JAWS. I go. Works every single time. I can get the third encounter escape every single time. And all I have to do is watch for JAWS to come up. Don't be too quick though. Right? Don't be too quick or, or it won't work. It's kind of... You know, he shows up and then you go. Alright. But you'll get the third encounter skip every single time. And when you come out, use use this ship this ship path the exact same way as I do it. Don't do any variations. Okay, you need to go through this little You need to go through that little path right there. Right there. You press left into it and down. As soon as you get off it, you go down. And now you, you're just using this path. It's the exact same path every single time. Because we're trying to manipulate where Jaws is going to be. Because before I went through that white patch and came straight through here, I hit Jaws right there. It's just kind of an odd place for Jaws to come in. He shows up and just runs right into you right there. And I found going through that little ripple, I actually had these little uh, tricks. I always call it uh, white water rafting. As soon as I hit the uh, um, the tracker and I start going to the left, that's, that's my cue. Left to white water rafting. I make sure I always go through that little that, that little uh, spot right there, because otherwise, if you just came straight down and over to the left, like uh, like I did in my 344, um, Jaws is going to show up exactly where my ship is right now on the screen. All right, and all this is buffered. And once again, I leave the ship for last because I found it's one second faster. Because, and once again, this was part of going through that little white patch. Not only manipulated Jaws so I didn't run and run into him where I pointed that out, but uh, it made it so that Jaws shows up down there right after you get the submarine quick enough that it's one second faster to go down there and do the encounter down there instead of off the port like we have been doing it. But I come straight down as far as I can, and then I go right. Then I go straight down, right up, left, and bam. I just keep holding left, and when Jaws hits me, he hits me. Okay? All of this is buffered. This is the easy part of the game, because it's just very simple stuff. Because basically, after I do the bonus stage, all of this stuff is simple. I think I've only messed it up once, just because I wasn't focusing enough and I was tired. Uh, all of this should be very standard. You should be able to perform it every single time. With the Jaws encounter, I always lob one before I get off. It's just uh, just a way of getting a, a hit in there. Okay, so I can automatically start with one power down. I haven't even burned off my ship yet. And I'm just rapidly hitting it at this point. And you're going to see right there, right before his tail goes off, I already have five power off 
of Jaws by using the strategy of burning off my ship like that. Um, and looking at the previous world records where they were kind of lobbing off the ship, uh, the max I've seen is four. Okay, so this is a much better strategy. And uh, so as soon as he goes off the screen, there's a slight delay before he shows up again. And you notice I, I was able to lob it just before it came in. So you can see it. He's off, delay, he's there. Um, I actually did it qu quite well right there. Now I will tell you, when you hit this encounter, when you hit this encounter, right there, it's always going to be the exact same. Jaws is always going to show up in the left. Always. That's why I'm already going to the left before Jaws even shows up. And I'm, I'm already throwing stuff at him. Because I know exactly where he's going to show up every single time. He's going to be on the left. So here I'm just spamming, hitting the A button as hard as I can, saying, oh, please God, please God. <laughs> you know, let this be it. Um, because it can be hard to time out these hits. And this, I think, is the the part of the game that you will spend the most time trying to practice because it's the part of the game where you can save the most amount of time. Everything else is pretty fixed at this point. There isn't much that you can gain from what I can see without like mass experimentation saving point two seconds somewhere. I'd rather focus on, on trying to execute something better where the timing can be. That's why I didn't try to carve off 0.8 seconds off the, the bonus stage by doing riskier strats that I can only execute 5% of the time. You know, that's why I focused on working on JAWS because that's where the time can be spent. Like I said, there's a 4.7 second difference between what I do here in this world record run, this uh, 334, and the TAS. This is where most of the time can be gained. Okay, if I do a slight d d delay after he comes out, right there so I can hit him. If I'm fast enough, this jellyfish that's coming up, I'm going to be able to sneak in behind, uh, you know, miss him. If I'm fast enough, I can, I can get in there. Normally, if I don't get that, then I'll, I'll reset because I want to make sure I know where everything is going to be so I can execute it well. Now, here I can, depending on where that eel is that's right behind Jaws right now, I can, I can either um, sneak up between Jaws and him and go up to the top and lob a few at him before he's the corner at her. In this case, I had to go to the right and try to get those two hits in him. And you have to be very careful. You have to be really good with the uh, sub dynamics because you'll clip his tail so many times. You'll, you'll, you'll run into the eel and you'll have to do it all over again. It's very annoying. I see I kind of missed there. I could have done this a bit faster, but once again, you're missing that eel. Oh, that one got in the way. Now, because I was way ahead of schedule there, because every time you hit Jaws, he slows down a little bit, but everything else continues to move at its original pace, you'll want to practice this. And everything's going to function the same, except for if you do Jaws a little bit faster, certain things may happen differently. And one of those things is I ended up on top. I wasn't expecting that at that point. I was ahead of schedule. I had, um, I ended up hitting that eel. And sometimes I'm trying, I'm in front of that eel. Not the eel, the, the jellyfish. I'm in front of the jellyfish. But I'm just timing these out, timing these out. Da, 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 da. Excellent. Um, this was actually the first time I, all right, I've done a lot of practice 
on on this encounter with Jaws with the submarine. And this is the first time I think I had him down. I mean, look at that. Look at that. I got him down to two life. And he just crossed the, the, the screen over there. This was ex very exciting for me. This is the lowest I've gotten Jaws at this point. Because once you've played enough times... Now at this point, this is the last pass for Jaws. This is the last time that he's going to go across the screen. The last time you're going to want him to. And the 344, I got him when he was coming out from the right hand side of the screen after this pass. It's not very fast. In the 336, I was able to get him before he was able to exit to the right hand of the screen to, on this pass right here. This is the quickest I've ever beaten Jaws, and I got him right around in the middle. I was incredibly pleased with this. I even sped up my process right there. Bam, look at that. Look at that. And the 336, Jaws was over to the right hand side of the screen already. This is where I where I saved two seconds. I was able to defeat Jaws so much quicker. This is I'm excited about this run because in this run I got Jaws when he was furthest to the left than I've ever gotten him before, and I have it in an actual run. And so I was very pleased with that. Okay. Normally Jaws will do pretty much only a couple things. And you'll see him do a couple things. It's not completely random. If you kill a jellyfish or if you kill an, e an eel, uh, you'll find that Jaws may respond differently depending on how many um, points that you get he may respond differently but the point is is that he's only going to do like maybe three or four different things at this point in this game i noticed he started going to the right that could be good or bad i i um from this uh this this particular encounter spot i found that um if he starts going to the right uh he may continue to the right which is very nice and this is exactly what he did but you have to watch what he's doing I'll take this back as soon as this portion starts you notice how he started going to the right but I recognize that you can kind of watch it you can kind of see him watch watch him watch him he starts moving to the right right there you notice how it shifted to the right a little bit and immediately I started holding right because that's where he's going now as I had explained before if he would have straightened up like say all right let's say he straightened up right here what I would do is I would go to the right slightly reason being is if if he continued going straight at me I could just move uh, once once Jaws hits about right here he's not going to be moving anymore at least uh, not that I've seen okay he's, he's gonna go straight at that point and so you can just pivot to the left and then hit him otherwise if he does move to the right again which sometimes he has and I, I've done runs with that where I'm already to the right, so if he starts moving to the right, I have that little distance there to respond to it. And so, um, basically, if he's coming straight at you, and you don't know what he's going to do when you move to the right a little bit, if he continues straight, you can pivot left and hit him. If he moves to the right, you have the reaction time to go to the right. If he goes to the left, well, you're just screwed. But at least there's that 66% chance that he's going to either go straight or to the right. And you, you can control that portion. And it's just a reset on the other portion. 
But everything worked out great here. Now there's a few different places where you actually can uh, spear them here with this strobe. Um, I, I did this a little late. I think I hit my input right, right there, but he, he moved forward when I hit the strobe. You can kind of see he was a little further back from that first dark blue line. And when he was like that far from it, I would spear it. He shoots straight up, and you have to delay slightly so he can show himself, and then you can hit him. All right, if you did it right before he shifted, then you'll miss him. So you have to wait till he kind of like shifts and there's a certain timing to it. And the thing is, is if you, you do spear and he hasn't shifted yet, that's fine because it takes a couple frames for the spear to move forward. So in that frame time, he may shift and you can still hit him possibly on the very first possible frame. Um, I wouldn't advise trying to go for that. There's an, there's enough in the game to try to carve off time that, you know, not trying to go for something that's frame perfect, because if you run one frame too soon, then you miss them. And that's your run. And so just give yourself some leeway. Give yourself a couple frames uh, to, to buffer that. But uh, so, so basically, uh, with this run, with all these runs, as I explained in the World Record Evolution, if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go back and watch that. I execute everything in the exact same way. And so in this video, uh, hopefully uh, you've been able to pick up uh, some areas where you need to be holding a certain direction. You need to make sure that... Uh, you're getting things in a certain order and you know where you need to wait to get the right spawns and um, so you'll be able to achieve a world record too so once again thank you for uh, Karishi for uh, his SDA run and uh, for Rudy Freddy for encouraging him and everything he's done in the game and especially Jam Evil uh, without your 353 man uh, None of this could have been possible for this game. And so now I think we need a new task. So, uh, whoever is up for the challenge of doing a task that's based on the strategies we're using now for speedrunning, I would be very interested to see if that's uh, how much further down from a 329, maybe we could see a 327, 326, or something like that with, uh, with a task video now. So, once again, thank you for um, watching. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment under the video, and I'll be more than happy to try to explain things to you. Thank you very much.